In 2021, Zoom has released 30 new versions, starting on January the 11th with version 5.4.9 until December 27th with version 5.9.1. There's a ton of new features and if you want to know which are the coolest ones and the most impactful ones that you will be using in 2022, then this video is for you. Hi, my name is Enrico and I help you take your remote work to the next level with a splash of creativity. In this video, I'll be sharing with you the top 10 secret tips and tricks that you will start using in 2022 already from your next Zoom call. I have to say I hesitated a lot on which feature to put in number one because there is still some controversy around it. But let's park this for a moment and start with position number 10. Vanishing pan. Let's open a Zoom session. I connect as a host with a paid account from my PC and as a guest from a MacBook Pro. It was released in April 21 and it's a new annotation tool. It allows you to mark content with the marking fading away in a couple of seconds. That's very handy because it allows you to highlight information without needing to undo or delete the annotation. You'll find it under the spotlight icon and you can use it as all other annotation tools on a whiteboard or on a shared screen. But I find it very useful when we're sharing a document with many words. We can read through it and highlight the important words with the marking then vanishing automatically in a couple of seconds. Feature number nine, coffee cup non-verbal feedback. It was released in July, and this option allows you to tell the participants and the host that you're temporarily away from the meeting. As a host, I suggest you to encourage participants to use this icon, especially if you've planned some interaction with the audience or breakout room activities. So when you launch the session, you know exactly how many people are there to actively participate. So for example, you avoid the risk of putting four people in a breakout room where only one people will actually show up. Feature number eight, poll access for alternative host. Released in September, this is more of a niche feature, but that has, in certain situations, a big impact. So if you're working with a producer and want him or her to make the polls, now this is possible. Feature number seven, focus mode. The focus mode feature was released in July. This is used to focus the audience attention on the host and avoid distraction from other participants. If the host turns it on, only the host will be able to see participants' videos and shared screen, whereas all other participants will only be able to see the host video and shared content. To better show you how it works, I'm connecting with the third device, my iPhone. So you'll get to see me three times. Sorry. You'll find the focus mode option by clicking on the more icon. If focus mode is on, the host can see the video from both other participants, whereas the guest on the Mac can only see the host video and not the one of the participant on the iPhone. Also, if the host shares the screen, then everybody can see it. But if the participant on Mac shares the screen, then only the host is able to see it. Whereas the participant on the iPhone won't see anything. I know I could have mirrored my iPhone screen, but I was too lazy. So I'm showing it to you on camera, and I hope you'll trust me on this. It can be turned on and off during the meeting. And from December, now hosts can also schedule a meeting to start automatically with focus mode. If you're liking the video so far, please hit the like button so more people will be able to see it. Thank you. Feature number six, share screen to breakout rooms. This feature was made available in June. When sharing screen in the main room, the host or the co-host can share screen to all active breakout rooms. Let's create a breakout room and let's send the two other me participants into that room. At the bottom, you'll now see the option share screen to all breakout rooms. The message warns you that your screen will be started in the main session and in all breakout rooms. You'll be able to share the screen, but the video and audio will not be shared. Also very important, if participants are sharing screen in their breakout rooms, then their screen sharing will be stopped. I have a full video explaining all the ins and outs of this important feature, covering how to use it, but also best practices on when to use it, and some tips and tricks on how to pimp it up with OBS and your virtual camera. If you want to know more, at the end of this video, you can click in the link down in the description. Feature number five, advanced polls and quizzes. This feature was released in November and it expands so much what you can do with polls. You now have many more types of questions and answers. You can upload images and results are automatically recorded. When scheduling a meeting, click on advanced options and then in the polls, quizzes section, click on create. The same way as you were doing it before to create a simple poll. Now you'll see a second option appearing advanced polls and quizzing. Before having a look at it and getting too excited, there is one thing that you need to know. If you launch an advanced poll, but a participant does not have version 5.8.3 or higher, then this participant won't be able to take part in the poll. So what can we do with advanced polls? First option is single choice. You can mark it as required, 
and have the option to show it as drop-down. Then there is multiple choice, which is self-explanatory. The third option is matching. You have prompts on the left and possible answers on the right. So you could ask participants to match the country with the capital city or something more relevant. The next option is rank order. This will show up in a table of rows and columns. So for example, in the rows, you can write items that need to be evaluated. And in the columns, the ranking scale. Then you have short answer and long answer, where you can ask participants to provide free text feedback. Then you have fill the blank, where you can ask participants to fill in part of a sentence. Write the whole sentence and then highlight the part of it that should show as a blank. Tap enter and Zoom will do the rest of the job. The last one is rating scale. You can choose the two extremes of the score and then label the low score and the high score. Feature number four, presentation slide control. It's been made available in November and it basically avoids a situation that we've all experienced. Can you please go to the next slide? Next slide, please. Now the host can give or can be asked to give remote presentation control. So now a presenting participant can remotely advance the slides that are shared by another participant. It works with PowerPoint, Keynote and Google Slides. When sharing the presentation, just click on Remote Controlled and then you can decide to auto-accept all requests or pick the participant you want to give the mouse keyboard control. Now from the Mac, I'm now advancing the presentation that has been shared from the PC. And it's now time to unveil the top three. Position number three, post-meeting surveys. Launched in July, now this feature allows the host to configure a post-meeting survey that will launch automatically when the meeting is ended. You'll find the survey option when you schedule a meeting, then go to advanced options, and you'll find it in the same place where you found the polls and quizzes. You can decide to use the native Zoom service or provide a URL that will point to a third-party survey. When the meeting ends, participants will be prompted to take the survey. The built-in Zoom survey offers a few options. The rating scale, for example, if you want to collect your net promoter score, single choice, multiple choice, and a free text comment box. And you can select to allow participants to respond to questions anonymously. If you need to ask different type of questions, you may want to use a third-party survey, like SurveyMonkey or Microsoft Forms. Just copy the URL of the survey and paste it in the appropriate section. Position number two, immersive view. This is just fantastic. It was made available in April, and with it, you can recreate the feel of your meeting room or classroom. When enabled using the virtual background feature, participants are placed in a scene of your choice. You can select one of the presets or you can upload your own one. Participants can be placed automatically or you can choose their place manually. There are scenes made for two, three, four, up to 25 participants. You can move participants around and if you're not happy with the scene, you can just change it on the go. Zoom has even made some special theme scenes like this Halloween one or this skin season one. Immersive view can be used for fun and I find it very useful, for example, if you're running an interview or if you're teaching a class. The feature in position number one is Zoom Apps. The feature was released in July and basically allows you to launch third-party apps directly from within Zoom, like for example the Timer app or Miro whiteboard. In theory, it should provide a seamless experience for you, the host, and the participants, as it cuts a few steps like sharing screens, sending links, opening other applications outside of Zoom. But I said in theory, and yes, I still think it's in theory, as in order to consistently use Zoom apps in a meeting, then all participants must have that specific app installed. But what happens if not all participants have installed the app or they want to install it or even they can install it? Well, first, if you want to support me, subscribe to my channel. Then watch this video showing all my excitement for the new Zoom app features in July and this one year to find out why I was so skeptic only a few weeks later.